So now I'm going to talk to you quickly about two dimensions of ma'ataha, this phrase that Allah does not place a burden except whatever He gave them, except with whatever He gave them and within whatever He gave them. So let me explain this in by way of an analogy, so this abstract idea will become easier to understand. Think of a student who's super, super smart, doesn't even have to do any homework, he can get easily 100 on the exam. Okay, if he, sp if he spent five minutes studying, he can get 100 on the exam. But this kid gets a 90 on the test. Another student, mathematics was not in his genes. He has to study 20, 30 hours and barely get to a 65. Yeah? A teacher knows that the one who earned that 65 put a lot of work in to get to that 65. And the student who didn't put any work in got a 90, but even if he put a little bit of work in, he would have gotten a 100. Who is the teacher, a real teacher, who is he disappointed with? The 90 student. On paper, the 90 student is better than the 65 student. But in reality, in reality, fast forward 10 years. He's not in fifth grade, he's in university. Because in, in, if, you're, if you're a smart kid, everybody tells you, you're so smart, you're so smart, you're so smart. Things are easy for you. You start getting used to not doing so much work and getting, getting through the test. Then you get, and, and the kid who wasn't told, you're so smart, you're so smart, he was used to doing the hard work. Now they're in university, both of those guys. Yeah. And for the first time, the subject matter is so big that being smart is not enough, you've got to do work. You can't just go through university being smart, you gotta get through university doing work. But the kid who was super smart was not used to doing work. So now for the first time in his life, he fails a test, fails an exam. And the kid who was getting 65s, he got a B, he got, or he got an A minus, he, he got fine, because he's used to doing work. And the kid that was, that was you know, so happy getting 90s without any effort falls into depression. I used to be really smart in school, I don't know what happened, maybe I became dumb. I'm just not smart anymore. He falls. In, he goes. He was on top of the hill, and then he falls all the way to the bottom. He might even drop out of school because he never learned the proper working habits. You understand? Allah is not just. Allah is saying two things. Allah does not put a burden on anyone more beyond their budget. But also, Allah has not put a burden on you except according to your budget. In other words, if you were capable of more, Allah made sure you are capable of more, so you, Allah expects you to do more. You were given more wusr, He expects more infaq from you. So it's not just, it's within your budget that Allah expects, but Allah expects more from people who He gave more to. Allah expects less from people who He gave less to, but actually exactly according to their maximum. Like Allah, if I have the potential of doing more, Allah expects more from me. I'll give you a personal example for that. Uh, Alhamdulillah, according to some people, I'm famous. So because I'm famous, I could just turn a camera on and put a mic on and I could just say something. And I've been learning for a long time. So I could just say something from within the 20 years of what I've learned and not really open another book and I'll still have an audience. There'll still be people sitting there listening to what I'm saying. And I'm, I can produce content. And then I can look up what are the different kinds of trending content, what are, the con what are the subjects that are trending, get more views, and I can pick up on those subjects and start talking about those subjects, and I can be successful in the social media realm, or in the popularity realm, or in the content production realm. It's easy for me. I have tons of experience speaking. I have tons of things I can talk about. I can just run my mouth all day, start a podcast, do whatever, right? Or I could just sit back and say, Allah has given me this opportunity. Allah has given me the resources. Allah has given me people in my life. And He's given me an opportunity to serve His book and I know I'm capable of studying it more than I ever have before. And I'm, I know I have a capability of connecting people that are studying the book and getting more out of, more extraction out of the endless treasure of the Qur'an than maybe Allah has given other people that opportunity. He's given me more of that opportunity, right? So now I need to decide whether I'm just going to put a camera on and do my minimum. Nobody will know. Yeah. Or am I going to just you know, do, do more study now than I've ever done in my life? 
and do more work now than I've ever done in my life. Because, because in my mind, if Allah gave me the opportunity, He expects me to live up to the vastness of the opportunity. If He gave me the financial means, the intellectual means, the social means, the time, the health, if He gave me these things, how am I maximizing that stuff to His service, right? Those are the, the options before every one of us. With that in mind, in the context of this surah, what is Allah actually saying to a man who makes more money? Allah is saying, be generous. When you're generous to the woman that you're divorcing, and you're generous with the children, and you're generous with the giving of the, you know, the, the child support, you're giving more than the minimum, and you're being generous, you're softening hearts. It's a gesture of goodwill. It's gonna create you know, ease into the future. So don't be tight-fisted when it comes to, you know, this, this area. And then if you don't have much, okay, well then give whatever you can. Allah will put barakah in it. It's okay. فَلْيُنْفِقْ بِمَا أَتَاهُ اللَّهِ And this is actually Allah not just holding us, because fiqh will, will describe to you what's the, what's the minimum requirement, right? This ayah is not about the minimum requirement. The minimum requirement was already in ayah number six. Ayah number seven, this concluding ayah, is actually about, hey, do the maximum that you can. لِيُنْفِقْ ذُو سَعَةٍ مِّن سَعَتِهِ وَمَنْ قُدِرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقُهُ فَلْيُنْفِقْ مِمَّا أَتَاهُ اللَّهِ And now Allah on top of that is saying, and Allah has burdened you, not beyond your ability, but Allah has burdened you with certain potential, so live up to your potential. Whatever potential Allah gave you. سَيَجْعَلُ اللَّهُ بَعْدَ عُسْرٍ يُسْرًا Allah will put in place after difficulty, He will put in place ease. Those of you that are students of the Arabic language should note that both usr and yusr are masdar, masdaran. They're infinitive nouns. And infinitive nouns in the Arabic language are supposed to occur with a lam. They're supposed to occur with lam al-ta'arif. So there should be ba'da al-usri al-yusra. Ba'da al-usri al-yusra. But the lam is missing. Okay, so for example, we say in Arabic, we say correctly, or like the Quran, for example, says, "Inna dina and Allahi al Islam min ba'di ma ja'ahum al ilm." When a mustar occurs, the the standard for the mustar is the al. Now, when the al is removed unusually from a mustar in certain sentence structures, the al is removed, it creates a certain effect, and I'm going to talk to you about that effect. So the nakira, the anu, so it's not every time you see a tanween this happens. This is the tanween, or you see usrin has a tanween, yusrin has a tanween. They're asma munawana, right? This, when it's an unusual tanween, so not every tanween is unusual. You can't become self-declared, you know, balagha expert and say, I see a tanween here, so I know what's happening. No, no, no. Some tanweens are supposed to be tanweens, but some tanweens are unusual. They're unusually nakira, unusually indefinite nouns. When that happens, a few effects happen in Arabic. One of them is tanawur, the other is tankir, and the other is tafkhim. So let's, and there's others too, but I'm going to highlight these three for you. What does that mean in basic English for this ayah? It actually means Allah will take any kind of difficulty, any variety of difficulty, so in other words, Allah is not talking about one kind of difficulty. One kind of difficulty is financial difficulty. That's been the subject, right? The guy is spending more. He's spending in this way, this way, and this way. But there may be emotional difficulty, social difficulty. There may be a difficulty of being alienated from your kids. There may be a difficulty of people backbiting. There may be a difficulty of, you know, comments from people. There may be a difficulty of feeling lonely and isolated. There are all kinds of internal, external, social, financial, business. Somebody stops doing business with you because of the divorce going on. Somebody stops, cuts ties with you because of the divorce going on. So, you know, all kinds of difficulties. Or the kids are going to school and other kids are talking to them about the divorce and it's hurting the kids' feelings. There's, is there one kind of difficulty? No, there's a variety of difficulties. And so Allah did not limit the experience of someone going through difficulty in the divorce to one kind. And how did He do that? By removing the al. بعد عسرين. Right? And then tafkhim also comes from it. Tafkhim actually means that it's not a small difficulty. It's, it's a big problem. This is a magnanimous, it's, not a, it's a huge difficulty. So Allah is acknowledging the, the grandeur and the size and the magnitude of the difficulty that can come into a person's life as a result of the divorce. And then finally, it's also tankir. Tankir means unknown. 
So right now you're going through a difficulty because of the divorce or whatever. But there may be as the days go by, new problems emerge that you never had to face. Or you didn't even know they were on the horizon and new problems are coming out as a result of that divorce. So now this is Allah not only giving hope, but He's actually also giving a reality check. This is not a small decision. Divorce is not a small decision. Be ready for the difficulties you can forecast and be ready for storms that are not on the forecast. And they'll pop up out of nowhere. But doesn't matter so long as you give what you're supposed to give. Any kind of difficulty that comes, Allah will bring some kind of ease. And the same tanween is used for yusran. So what does that mean for yusran? It may not be the kind of ease you're expecting. It may be a different kind of ease. You see, some people, they, they, they wish life could go back to the way it used to be. Right? Because that was easy. That's because in our mind, what, you, what you're familiar with is what is easy. But Allah might bring you a new kind of easy. Allah may bring you a new kind of relief, a new kind of risk. And you, you shouldn't sh shut your mind to, no, 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 it's not the way it used to be, so it's not good enough. It's not the way it was, so how can this be any good? Because the only thing that was good is what I knew. If the only thing that was good was what you knew, then it would be the yusr that is known to you, that would be al-yusr. But the yusr that is not known to you, it's a new kind of yusr. Don't dismiss the new opportunities, new situations that Allah creates because you're comparing them to the past and saying, it's not what it was, so how can it be any good? Right? So just like we shouldn't be hung up on the past negatives, we shouldn't also be hung up on the past positives. There are new positives that can come into a person's life. There are new good things that can come into And it may be that the good that you're thinking is not so big could be huge. The ease could be magnanimous. It could be magnificent. You know? And it may lead, the domino effect, it may lead to other goodness that can be much bigger than any goodness you had in the past. That all of that can happen. Also you will notice here that I wrote here the lack of lahu or the lack of laha. Yani, سَيَجْعَلُ اللَّهُ لَهَا يَعْنِي لِلنَّفْسِ بَعْدَ عُسْرٍ يُسْرًا Or, سَيَجْعَلُ اللَّهُ لَهُ يَعْنِي لِلْإِنسَانِ لِلْفَرْضِ بَعْدَ عُسْرٍ يُسْرًا لم يذكر he didn't mention Allah will put ease after difficulty for the person or for such a person. Allah didn't mention the person. Allah, therefore, by not mentioning the person, Allah is saying Allah will create ease for you, who met the man who was the subject, who's paying the money. He'll create ease for you. He'll create ease for the children. He'll create ease for the ex-wife. He'll create ease for the new family that's coming. He opened the door of ease as a result of this across the board. And it's almost as if, if you are open-handed with your spending and you're generous with your spending, you don't know that Allah will use that not only to put barakah in your family, but because of that generosity, Allah might be using your generosity to create yusr in the other family or open some other doors in that family. So there's this tawassur fil mafhum, fil ma'na. There's this openness in the, in the meaning. And it's so cool that this ayah began with dhu sa'a, like, the, the one who has more vastness should give out of more vastness and by the end of it you see the vastness of Allah's mercy opening up the vastness of the ease that's opening up so there's a there's a sa'a from you and there's a sa'a from Allah the last comment I'll make about this ayah is about the meaning of the word sa'a sa'a is used the one who has more should give more right but sa'a literally means expense and expense could be maddi but it can also be qalbi meaning a person is open hearted a person is not speaking with, you know, you can give somebody money, but you can give it with a look on your face. Here's your money. Here's your charity. Or you could throw a check at them, or you could make a comment at them, right? You could, you could um, your, your face could be condescending. You could just say something like, so, how's my money doing? Just throw a little, little jab here and there, right? Uh, Allah says, لا تبطلوا صدقاتكم بالمن والأذى Don't cancel any good deeds, any charities, anything you do by making it sound like you're doing somebody a favor. بالمن And by doing anything that causes hurt. When you do that, the, the sadaqah doesn't even count. So part of your ذو سعه, being ذو سعه, is not just that you're giving more, but you're giving with an open heart. 
You're giving with kindness. You're giving with di dignity. You're not giving someone and making, making them feel like, oh, they're dependent on you, or they're a burden on you, or you're doing them a favor, or they just, they, they're eating off of your scraps and things like that. You're not, you're not humiliating them. And that's part of the meaning of dusa'a also. Okay? Now. I'll just read some of this commentary for you because I thought it was beneficial. And the purpose of this ayah is to convince the one who spends to do, do even more so. Because Allah has not asked him more than he can handle. And that's why our scholars say, That's why our Meaning, uh, the one who is poor is not being asked to put himself out on the street. Whatever he can afford, he can do without putting himself in harm's way. So it's a special comment to the one who's having financial difficulty because Allah mentioned ataha after it. I, I, I told you that. Allah attributed that to himself. So it's a special kind of courtesy given to those that are going through difficulty. This is important. Allah is not guaranteeing that after every difficulty, ease will come. Allah is talking about this particular scenario. So Allah is, say, Allah is saying, he's actually adding the tanween that I talked about is special. He's saying it's special because if he said difficulty and ease, that would become absolutely every difficulty will be gone and every ease will come. But since the lamb is missing, it would be some difficulties will come and some eases will come, but life will never be completely free from all difficulty and all ease. It's never going to be like that. So Allah is being realistic in your expectations, making you have realistic yet hopeful expectations because of the language of the ayah.